For some reason, out of all the animations I've posted, Stan has gotten way more views than any of the others. And it's been over two weeks since I've posted it, so it's finally time to make a tutorial. Okay, here we are. So before I jump straight into the code, let me just cover quickly the agenda for the video, just in case you want to skip ahead to any chapter. Um, just look at the timeline below and I'll have them all labeled. So first we'll take a very quick look at the HTML and then another quick look at the JavaScript and we'll spend most of the time on the CSS. And I'm going to split that between actually writing the CSS to create the character and then writing the CSS to handle the animations. So I'll do the character stuff first and then the animations second. And that should give you a full picture of how I made this. Okay, so before we start, let's just take one more look at the animation itself. Hmm? <laughs> ah. All right, so the HTML is pretty straightforward, so we won't spend too much time here. But just to call out, I am importing some special fonts. So if you've ever seen some of the fonts in my videos and you're wondering where I get them, I get everything from Google Web Fonts. So if you're interested in adding better fonts to your projects, I highly recommend checking that out. And then if we go through the HTML, it's pretty much just one-to-one -one matching with what the character looks like. So we've got this container class um, and then Stan, like I said, very self-explanatory, hair, glasses, and then I've got the glasses broken down into lenses. Same with ears, I've got left and right. Um, and then the head, um, I've got eyebrows, eyes, and then pupils within the eyes. And then you'll notice this common pattern I'm doing here with left and right. Um, and you'll see in the CSS why that's helpful. Nose, mouth, tears that you don't see right now, but you see when the animations start. And then of course, shirt. And then uh, when I say neck, I mean just this little triangle here arm left. I don't even think that's being used, but originally I had intended for it to be used. Arm right, um, and then as you've seen from the animation, that is the thing that pops out. Just the check mark, and then um, I've got the pants with a belt that he is not wearing. I can't rem remember, maybe he originally had a belt, but not anymore. Um, and then we've got this um, prompt, and finally a button wrapper that just holds our input our capture label and our button itself. Okay, so let's look at the JavaScript. So pretty simple here, we just have a few query selectors that are getting the container, button, and input elements that we just saw in the HTML. Um, we have a function called animate start that when it's called, it just adds a class called told stan onto the container. And then we have a function called input change hand handler um, and then basically what that does is it checks for certain strings and then based on those strings it adds specific text or classes rather to the container as well. And then down here at the bottom we have this um, event listener that we're adding to the button. So when the button is clicked we want to call that animate start. And then we have an event listener that we're adding to our input. So when um, the input event is happening on the input uh, we want to fire this input change handler. Okay, so now that we've gotten the HTML and JavaScript out of the way, we can look at the CSS, which I'm sure most people are here for. So like I said, I'll break it down into character styles and then animation second. So if you'd like to just jump ahead to the animation, feel free, that's uh, available in the timeline below as a chapter. Cool, so we have a container that's basically just 100% uh, of the viewport height. Um, and then, like I said, Google Fonts, I'm using this uh, Roboto Condensed. And then um, just some styles for the button, nothing special here. Um, you'll notice I do a lot of absolute positioning in this project. That to me just makes animating a lot easier um, instead of working, worrying about the flow of CSS. Um, so we've got button, button wrapper, just a few basic styles for the input. Um, I'll explain more when I get to the character, but just gonna fly through these, capture label, and then, okay, here we have Stan. So you'll notice that he is scaled to 1.3 right now. So if we go to one, that was the original style. And I just wanted him to be a bit bigger. So I scaled him up to 1.3. Um, he's absolutely positioned, um, nothing crazy. Stan is basically just a wrapper for everything else. So 
the head itself, um, if I go ahead and get rid of a bunch of things, this is kind of interesting. So if I get rid of some stuff uh, in the DOM, you can see like just the shape of the head. So <laughs> this is actually what Stan looks like without uh, hair or clothes. Um, so kind of funny just to play around. Sometimes I surprise myself when I'm doing this, uh, doing these things and just kind of like have a little chuckle. Um, but let's put everything back. Don't want to have Stan exposed for too long. Um, cool. Yeah. So you'll see this border radius. This is creating the shape of the head. So border, basically this is a, um, border radius is kind of a, a shorthand property. Um, and we can specify four different properties. So 100 for, for this is the top left, 100 for this is the top right, and then zero and zero is uh, bottom right and bottom left, I believe in that order. So you can see that this curve right here is due to the border radius that we're, being, uh, that we're setting. And then if we go take a look at the eyes, so let me just go ahead and over here we can look at his eyes and we can scale them up a little bit. Um, actually, let's do like something crazy. And then Z index. Okay, so you can see the eye right here is basically just um, kind of similar to, the, to what we did with the head. It's um, got a border radius of zero and zero on the top and then 25 and 25 on the bottom left and right. So again, just creating that shape. Uh, you'll see the same thing we did with the pupils. So Border radius uh, will take you a long way in terms of simple shapes. So I highly recommend getting comfortable with it because it is extremely useful um, and it's just, yeah, an invaluable tool to, to make simple shapes like this. Um, I'm using position, absolute positioning here to just kind of position them 20 pixels in from the left and the right side. Pupils are pretty much the same as eyes. They just have a black background and they're a bit smaller. And then eyebrows are it's just a rectangle with um, a, a 25 pixel border radius applied to the whole thing. Um, hair, this is where the border radius can get kind of fun and funky. So you can actually tweak a lot of these properties and make the hair kind of do whatever you want. So a lot of times when I'm creating a new character, I'll just start with the hair and I'll just like make it way bigger. Um, and then I'll start kind of tweaking all of these properties. So let's see, like put it on the left here. That looks like an emo person. Uh, we go up top. Now we kind of get like a pompadour style haircut. Um, but if we look at border radius, you can see all of the properties being applied here. So we can get a few um, more custom shapes when we use percentages. So I highly recommend also getting comfortable with that just because it allows you to unlock kind of more fun and creative uh, layouts. So if we look at the glasses, Look at this, you'll see the border radius uh, trick being applied here again. This time they don't have a solid color though, they just have a border being applied to them. And then if we take a look at the ears, so I think the ears are actually positioned behind the head. So I think the ears might be, uh, let's check this out. I think I'm forcing the ears back. So if we just put them f in the forefront um, and then maybe we give them a different background color to see them. Yeah, so the ears um, are kind of just strategically placed little, um, whatever this shape is, uh, kind of like mini stand heads. Um, so I'm not worrying about making like a specific ear shape. I'm just placing it in the back. So that's another little trick that I use a lot, just uh, using the, the Z index, very valuable. Um, take a look at the nose. Yeah, so the nose just basically is a simple almost circle. I think, yeah, it's a bit wider than it is tall. And then we've got a border radius applied and um, some fun box shadow stuff. So I don't think I wrote this all out, or I definitely didn't write, write this all out by hand. I used boxshadow.dev. So go ahead and hop over there, play, play around with that tool. It's really useful. Highly recommend it. Um, the mouth. So the mouth is actually interesting. It's not just a solid line. It's um, pretty much like uh, being used, or rather, it's uh, it uses this bo border color property um, in a specific way to kind of like manipulate um, the way it looks. So if we zoom in on the mouth right here, you'll see that it's got a little bit of a um, some kind of corners here, 
And that just allows us to transition between the smile and the frown more easily. So you'll see that come up when the animation stuff is explained. Um, if we take a look at the shirt, nothing special here, just a black uh, rectangle. The neck is a triangle. So this is actually another trick here. So basically you have a shape that doesn't have any background color and then you just set the colors of the borders and that allows you to make a triangle in CSS, which is kind of on its own, not easy to do, but you can just uh, use this border trick and, and make it. Um, the pants are, again, using a border trick. This is a trapezoid that I just flipped. So pretty easy once you understand how to do it, but uh, if you just fuss around with CSS from kind of the ground level, it may not be that intuitive. Um, yeah, and then we've got prompts here. That's just the, the text, the prompt text. And then tiers, which you'll see when they're animating, they're just uh, long, basically lines. And then we've got an arm that's being hidden behind him right now that you'll see come out. A hand, a thumb, these are just basic shapes. And then we have the check mark image. And then everything from here on out is the animations. So we can go ahead and cover those too. So let me go ahead and we'll actually use the DevTools uh, animations tray, which is really helpful. And I'm gonna go ahead and refresh and then we're gonna trigger all these animations. So I think it's Command Shift P, show animations. And then we'll go ahead and trigger all of these. So I'll type where did first animation gets triggered your oops sorry I'm not looking at my keyboard at all your hair go second animation gets triggered and the third animation gets triggered and then we click the button tell stand and the final animation gets triggered so if we go down here we can look at our animations which is pretty cool so let's get rid of all this and then here's the first animation. So where's the eye squint actually? Thumbs up, smile. Okay, so, oh, I think the eye squint might actually not be an animation. So yeah, if we look back at here, this is kind of a little lazy on my part. Uh, I should have made this an animation, but really all it's doing is checking for the eye squint class to be added to the container. And then it's just changing the height of the eyes. So that's why it's not showing up as an animation down here, but if we look at animating tier, tiers falling, tiers eyebrow left and right, um, and then we have the frown. So what do those look like? So basically they're keyframes. Um, tiers falling just changes the height of the teardrops. Um, eyebrow left just moves the eyebrows up slightly, or no, down slightly, yeah, down slightly and rotates them slightly. And then the frown basically takes that mouth shape that I showed you and just um, puts a different border radius on it to turn it into like a frown shape. Um, and then smile, you can see does something similar actually, uh, just changes the border radius, rotates it and then moves it up just so um, it doesn't actually like shift on the screen when it happens. Yeah, so that would be what happens when the tears start falling. And when he's smiling, I just went over what the mouth is doing and then the eyebrows go up. So. If we take a look at making him smile again, you can see that the eyebrows, um, let's see, maybe they don't go up, they just rotate, uh, yeah. So they uh, rotate in a different way and then they move slightly, they move slightly up. So you can see that they went from like this down shape here to like, or this down shape here rather, to like a relieved shape. So that's a good way to give characters life and animation. Um, and then, yeah, we've got the smile here that I just explained. And that's it for the, the smile. So we've just got these three keyframes. And then if we do the told stand here, we can look at that. Um, we've got the thumbs up that happens. So if we just run this animation like this, thumbs up happens first. Then if we keep going, you'll see check mark starts. So the opacity of the check mark goes from zero to one and the check mark moves up um, with just a translate Y. So if we look at thumbs up and check mark, we can look at those keyframes. So yeah, thumbs up basically just unhides the thumb. So the thumb is hiding behind the hand um, before this animation starts. If we go back and replay it. Um, 
let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a little bit uh, misleading. The thumbs up really just means the arm extends. So it's not so much the thumb, it's just the arm. And then the check mark itself, like I said, just moves slightly up and the opacity changes. So that's pretty much it. Uh, it's a pretty simple animation when you look at it. Nothing complex is going on once you understand CSS animations. So I think this is a really good place to start if you want to learn CSS animations because these are pretty straightforward, but you can see that the character itself looks pretty expressive. And that actually ends up looking a lot more kind of sophisticated than it turns out to be once we actually dive in to look at the code. All right, so thank you so much if you stuck around till the end of the video. Um, if you've never been to my channel before, you'll know that I, paste, or I post a lot of these uh, YouTube shorts with these CAPTCHA characters, but I also post other CSS animations and I have a couple other tutorials on the channel and plan on posting quite a few more. So if any of that sounds appealing, please go ahead and support the channel by subscribing. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.